So, Cyberpunk Edge Runner has been released, and it's rad. It's got sick animation, a fleshed out world that makes you feel the dystopian grittiness it's going for, and after watching the show, it guarantees that Night City changes everybody, even when they're observing it through a screen. Chances are, you've probably seen it, and I'm banking on that for this video. Because what I want to focus on is my biggest takeaway from the show. Besides the insatiable urge to re-download Cyberpunk 2077 for PS4, because I don't have a PS5. But much like fighting cyberpsychosis, I must keep myself in check or become a menace to Night City. But jokes aside, I want to talk about what I think is the biggest lesson of the show. If that sounds like something you're into, welcome aboard, Samurai. And to do that, I want to preface this by stating this may come across as mean-spirited to those I talk about. So if you don't want that kind of negativity in your life, feel free to peace out now, and I completely understand. For something to be cyberpunk and anti-establishment, I figured there has to be a little mentality of fuck it and punching up, no matter the consequences. With that stated, let's begin. The main perspective we see cyberpunk edgerunners through is David Martinez, a street kid with aspirations for a better life, and when backed into a corner after his mother dying and massive loads of debt, in a metaphorical Hail Mary, he gets a ripper dock to install the illegal Sandevistan into his back, giving him an edge in the city. But this act, rather than being one last raw, actually begins David's climb to the top of Night City. He gets a crew to look out for him, a partner who cares about him, and eventually climbs out of that pit of hell he started in on the bodies of those he kills. Things are looking pretty great, until one of his chum's main enters fits of cyberpsychosis with his heavy use of implants, ending in tragedy as events lead to most of the original group dying or becoming mentally broken. David is faced with the cruel lesson that the series and Night City is teaching to those through examples whether they choose to listen or not. Take care of yourself, and be grateful for what you have. In episode 7, an unspecified amount of time has passed, but David is no longer a street kid with nothing, but now a fabled edge runner. He has a luxurious apartment with his partner Lucy, he's decked out in cyberware in nearly every department of his body. Compared to 99% of those in Night City, David has made it. His moment of defiance wasn't an immediate death sentence. It's become his identity, his ace in the hole that got him out of this situation. He has what so many would kill for, and now he can kick up his feet and enjoy his life. Maybe even go to the moon with Lucy like she always wanted. But it's not enough for him. Because he has such a high tolerance for the San Devastan and other cybernetics, he believes that it justifies why he keeps pushing himself and won't become a cyberpsycho like Maine or those before him, because he's special. In a moment alone, David begins to lose it, accidentally killing a civilian on a job as he walks on the edge of sanity. Deep down, he knows he's not a special case. He's not immune to this condition, but he denies it, pushing himself further and further until it ends in that common outcome, as another life is snuffed out to the city. David was able to save Lucy and did so as himself and not a cyberpsycho, but a corpse is still a corpse. Another soul is fed into the machine, and the machine is still hungry. Now, Night City isn't a real place, but there's a comparison that is prevalent, especially with social media. We are constantly presented with images and people showing off how sick and awesome their lives are or highlight themselves to be something we should be desiring. It could be vast riches, an insane physique that only a tiny fraction of people can achieve, or thirst traps that initially start as titillation before speaking to a part of you that craves intimacy and connection that you feel missing, or talk shows and interviews that glorify how awesome it is to be a celebrity and the glitz and glamour of being objectified to the public. And all of that is positioned everywhere, planting seeds of doubt into your head, suggesting that your life isn't good enough, that you need something like you've seen, and if you do, you can be satisfied. You just need a big break, and when you get it, everything you went through will be worth it. What makes you worth getting that thing you aspire for? Well, it's obvious, because you want it the most. I'm sure you've already picked up on it, that's the same dream Night City banks on for those living within it. People who are hoping for something better than they are now, and all they need is to hustle, greasing the wheels of the machine in hopes that one day, it's all gonna pay off. And the really sad reality is that's a possibility that will only happen for a lucky few. And I bet when I said that, 
you thought of yourself as a special case. You're going to be that lucky duck who it's going to work out for. And I guess that because that was my immediate thought. And to be honest, I still do, as foolish as that sounds. Taking action for what you want is good, but when it reaches an extreme point of pushing yourself further and further and alienating yourself from everyone you care about, I believe that's where it becomes a problem. And I just want to say this before continuing, this is a first world problem. I know there are so many people out there just focused on surviving and providing for their families. I don't mean to sound hyperbolic about it, it's just something that I've noticed affecting me and I've seen it get to other people too. What I'm trying to say is this dream positioned like a carrot on a stick is just that, a dream. Something that makes you downplay what's going on in your own life for a fantasy of what could be. And much like Night City, social media culture is banking on you aspiring for that one big break. Courses and subscriptions by people who you will never meet, who don't personally care about you, will tell you to live a certain way because X, Y, and Z. All for the promise of a better life than you have now. I'm not saying don't try because it's impossible, but what I mean is don't bank your entire life on a fantasy of what could happen, and be sure to enjoy where you are in life right now however you can. If you like creating stuff, that's wonderful, but you should acknowledge that it might always be something you do because you enjoy it, and not because you make money from it. It's something I'm starting to internalize with my videos. The satisfaction of a good life doesn't come from external forces, that comes from within. There will always be low points, and plenty of mistakes will be made along your journey. But that's what makes all the great moments even better. It's great to do things to make your life better, but don't forget to make time for family and friends whenever you can, because it can get pretty lonely, and humans are social creatures. Don't put up with people selling you on their dreams. You gotta decide for yourself what you value and what you give a shit about. And if that aligns with someone else, rad. But that's an answer that only you can decide for yourself. And don't let a person on the internet tell you otherwise. Whether it's a millionaire who believes women are a man's property, or a guy who openly criticizes capitalism while profiting from other people's work, enough to own an over $2 million mansion. Or even me, telling you what media is important and of value. You decide what gives your life meaning, and a reminder to take care of yourself. You are the person that will be the most impacted by your decisions. If you give yourself wholesale to the system or social media, much like Night City, all that will be left is the work you put in and the lives you left behind. That same mindset ate David alive. It led to Maine feeling like he needed more cybernetics to feel like enough, and it'll lead to so many broken dreams on the promise that it's only a matter of time before they get the recognition and profit they crave. My biggest takeaway from Cyberpunk Edge Runner, besides having a total blast, is a reminder to always take care of yourself. Because if you let it, this culture of fame and profit will ring you out and leave you in a worse state than you started. Get in touch with yourself and internalize you don't need to follow someone's way of life or their beliefs to feel okay in your own skin. Set your boundaries with what you care about, not what someone on the internet told you to. And don't forget to spend time with those you care about, because life can get pretty lonely on your way to the top without good company. The happiest David was was in the company of his chooms, creating heaven in the gilded cage of Night City. And if you do that, you can make the most of this dystopian future. So what do you want? Thank you for checking out this video, and I hope you got some enjoyment out of it. Feel free to rate it whatever you think of it, and if you're new to the channel, I make recommendations on media I really enjoy. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I'll link a playlist to anime recommendations, and here's a suggestion you might dig. Thanks for watching, and take care of yourself.